Hello, everyone. I think we should be live now. Okay. Can everyone hear me okay? Brilliant. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Waterline Student Challenge 2021. And a big welcome to the launch day of the Waterline Summit 2021, brought to you by Marketing Humber alongside event partners, the University of Hull, Yorkshire Water, Orsted, Yorkshire Energy Park, and for 2021, COP26 partner Zero Carbon Humber. We're here at the Virtual Waterline Student Challenge Awards, sponsored by SC Thermal, to celebrate the outstanding contribution of young people across the region. I'm Kate Wallace Lockhart, Head of Social Impact at SSE, and as well as having the privilege to be a judge for the Waterline Student Challenge, I'll be your host for today's event. This is the inaugural, inaugural year of the Waterline Student Challenge, a unique opportunity for students aged 11 to 18 to play their part in finding solutions to the harmful environmental problems that we're all facing today. The ability to innovate has never been more important as we seek to build a net zero region and meet the climate emergency. So before we begin the event properly, we just have a little bit of virtual housekeeping. Firstly, um, please feel free to connect and converse via the chat box, which you should be able to see on your screen. And secondly, please feel free to ask any questions that you may have using the Q&A function box. We'll try and answer as many questions as we can, should time allow, uh, via the chat box. But if we don't manage that, any questions will be collated and Marketing Humber team will answer as many as possible. So now that that's out the way, I'm delighted to introduce your speakers for today's event. Firstly, we have Becky Hart, Director for Yorkshire and the Humber at CBI, the Confederation of British Industry. We have Sue Allen, Finance Director at Willerby. Mark Bl Blinkensop, Head of States at KCOM. Andrew Percy, Member of Parliament for Brick and Ghoul and the Isle of Axholme. And of course, we'll hear from our finalist teams from the regional schools too. But before I introduce the fi fantastic finalists, I want to give you some background on why SSE is so proud to be sponsoring the Isle of Axholme. And of course, schools too. But before I introduce the fi fantastic finalists, I want to give you some background on why SSE is so proud to be sponsoring the Isle of Axholme. And of course, oh. sorry everyone, a little bit of technical too. difficulties there. The fi fantastic finalists, I want to give you some background on why SSE is so proud. Can everyone hear me okay? Sorry, I was getting a bit of playback. Is that all good? Um, Sorry, uh, inevitable there will be a bit of technical difficulties in a, in a virtual award ceremony, so um, hopefully it's all okay and you can hear me fine again now. So, as I was saying, before I introduce the fantastic finalists, I just wanted to give you some background on why SSE is so proud to support the Waterline Student Challenge. SSC is passionate about achieving net zero and we know how engaged young people um, through the region are in tackling the, cri the climate crisis. Renewable energy is obviously at the heart of the energy transition, which is why SSE is building more offshore wind capacity than any other company in the world, including at Dogger Bank off the East Yorkshire coast. But we also know that there are times when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, and that's why we, it's vital that we have flexible power stations to step in when needed. And SC Thermal helps fulfil that role and operates several power stations across the UK. Of course, though, we're very aware of the need to rapidly remove carbon emissions from power generation. So to achieve that, SSE Thermal is investing heavily in cutting edge technologies, particularly carbon capture and storage and hydrogen. We believe these would be key to decarbonising major in industrial centres like the Humber, supporting local investment and high quality jobs for generations to come. We've already made some major steps. So just a couple of months ago, we carried out demolition works at our former Ferry Bridge coal-fired power station in West Yorkshire, symbolising the move away from coal and towards low carbon solutions. In North Lincolnshire, we are pushing forward with exciting and ambitious plans at our Keepy site, together with Equinor. Firstly, we are developing Keepy 3, a super efficient gas fire power station, which will be fitted with carbon capture technology. And secondly, we're developing Keepy Hydrogen, the world's first major 100% hydrogen fuel power station. Lastly, in July, we announced plans for one of the world's largest hydrogen storage facilities, our Albra site in East Yorkshire, which we co-own with Equinor. 
So the Humber then is firmly at the heart of our plans. And as a principal partner for COP26, we look forward to sharing the story of the Humber on a global stage. But we also recognise that we don't have all the answers. And that's why we want to work with the next generation of energy leaders who will take the reins in the years and decades to come as we power towards net zero by 2050. With this in mind, the Waterline Student Challenge has given a tremendous opportunity to young people from across the region to put forward their ideas and play a part in building a better future. I'm thrilled to represent SSE here today and can't wait to hear from the finalist teams. So let's get to it. Over the last six months, students across the region have demonstrated their passion for sustainability by developing innovative and inspiring sustainability projects for the Waterline Student Challenge. We received dozens of entries and the quality of submissions was incredibly high. So a big well done to every team that entered. But every competition needs a winner. And so the project's been judged by regional businesses and each of the six selected finalists will receive an exciting behind the scenes visit to one of the businesses, as well as a cash prize of 500 pounds each. So without further delay, in alphabetical order, our six finalist teams are Animal Water Savers from Bishop Burton College, Eco Steppers from Mallet Lambert School, Loyal Leaders at, from Engineering University Technical College, Northern Lincolnshire, RDUTC's Sustainability Crew from Ron Deering University Technical College, Team OEI from Mallet Lambert School, and last but not least, Team Wilberforce from Wilberforce College. A huge congratulations to all of our finalists. The judging panel was also struck by the creativity of some really outstanding artistic submissions from the students. I'm very pleased to therefore announce that Bishop Burton College student Emily Fitchett is the winner of a special Arts and Creativity Award for her sculpture design of a lavender plant and bees, which she designed to be placed within the college grounds, surrounded by a garden of flowers to help encourage wildlife. Big well done to Emily too. We now have a short film, take permitting, to highlight the finalist teams and their brilliant projects. Take permitting in detail. <laughs> We're here today to judge the Waterline Summit 2021 Student Challenge. What we've asked for is for students from schools across the region um, to put in submissions which focus on innovation and creativity in driving forward sustainability. We're looking for how practical it's going to be. Is it going to make a difference to the community and the schools? Have they worked on it together as a team? Because of course one person can have a brilliant idea but bring a group together and it really sparks off each other. Coming from the technology sector, we're looking for um, technology innovation ideas and um, things that really jump off the page for us and think, wow, they've really thought about this. I think we're looking for a diversity of thought as well, really creative ideas that are thinking outside the box from the next generation and our young people in this region. So where, where they've taken it from, something that's more than just an idea or um, repeating something that's, that, that we know already happens in the world and solutions that we already have but something that they can actually put into practice in their own environments. I'm looking for really new creative ideas. So where they've thought about some of the problems that we already know about and some real practical steps that we can all recognise. What has become very apparent is there is a great awareness out there in uh, the younger sort of generation of the world uh, and the problems. Uh, but what we have seen today is some really super solutions. So SC Thermal is the principal sponsor for the Waterline Summit 2021 Student Challenge. I suppose it's, you know, there's no competitive advantage of living in a world that's unsustainable and it's for businesses to come together with their peers, with their supply chains, with, you know, universities and, and government and all different organisations to try and find these solutions together. And of course, you know, schools are such an important part of that. And it's in all of our interest to work with these students, with these, you know, workers of the future to, to find the solutions. It's, it's good for everyone. It's good for our business too. 
We all come from our different specialisms as judges, so we've had some really good conversations. Um, I've been blown away by some of them, some things that I've really not seen before. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but um, we're really proud of the submissions that we receive from the students. The thing that really comes through strongly is the teamwork. So um, they've obviously put lots of effort into thinking about their ideas, developing their ideas and then presenting them as well. Really good support and evidence um, and just brilliant outcomes and, and brilliant ideas. I just think it's, um, it's really, really good to know that there is strong young people out there interested and, and passionate about environmental sustainability. So Marketing Humber is obviously leading this project and what's been really inspiring to see is the way that um, they've been working from, with schools right across the region um, with all sorts of different specialities and, and really promoting that sustainability message um, and thinking about, you know, this wider impact of sustainability, whether that's environmental, economic, social, um, but there's this wide view of value and this real understanding of the importance of, of school students and the future generation in, in building those innovative solutions. So I'm Megan, this is Casey, this is Louise and we are the Animal Water Savers. The first week when we came back basically we got told about how to conserve water. So what we did was we went down the animal unit with Katie and took the water from each of the enclosures, measured it, saw how much water we'd wasted, realised you know, it's got quite a bad impact. So from that, we decided to put in two IBCs in, on the unit. And then at the end of the day, when the animals have had their drink, um, we pour it all into a bucket and into the IBC and we can measure along the way how much water is wasted. And then the process and the plan was to use that water elsewhere on campus. It's been really interesting, like, like researching about the water and how like a big effect it has and like realizing that we can somewhat make a change. Even if it's a small one, we can still make it. I'm Mark, this is Rio, and this is Tom, and we're Team Wilberforce. Well, the project's mainly about making our K Science block more sustainable and renewable in how we keep it warm and how people actually act inside the building. The overall aim of our project is to kind of bring awareness about carbon emissions and how much people actually put into the environment that they don't even realise. Carbon emissions is probably one of the biggest challenges facing our generation. So as part of our investment in our own future, we thought it'd be one of the best things we could do to try and tackle it. It's been a really eye-opening because we've never really had the time in like other schools to collaborate and put all our ideas together. But now that we've had the opportunity, it's kind of, we've seen a lot more um, like answers to, our, to the carbon problem. Hi, my name is Catherine and I've worked with my friend Jaden and we are the RD UTC Sustainability Crew. So we wanted to focus on making people self-aware of how much carbon they're putting into the atmosphere. We started off with teachers and we asked them a series of questions of how they get to work. We got all our results and put it into a spreadsheet and then we did a best case scenario if every teacher uh, cycled in twice a week and it cut down the carbon emissions dramatically. Next kind of idea we wanted to focus on to make people self-responsible was tackle the students. Me and Jaden, we worked together and made a spreadsheet which linked to a Google form so students could see in real time how much carbon they're putting into the atmosphere. And then we made a presentation to show the, the new year tens and show them um, different ways they could be more sustainable for themselves. It's not that hard to make a small change because the small changes add up to these massive changes, which could mean that we could be carbon zero in the future. We are the uh, loyal leaders of the engineering North Lincolnshire UTC. What we've done is designed a game that simulates a wind turbine. You design and you basically simulate what's around the turbine. Well, we've made it using uh, Scratch and making it as realistic as possible. Uh, it's going to give school children an idea of what renewable energy is and a, a fun way to explain it. It helps school kids learning that renewable energy is uh, quite a big thing and it's very important for us to try and get that out there and make as many people as interested as possible uh, in renewable energy. Our team is called Team OEI. I'm Oliver, this is Emily and this is Isabel. So we saw a lot of plastics going into the ocean and landfill and even like on the streets everywhere and I was thinking of Bismarck 
efficient ways to store it that's like long term and helps the environment. We had an idea that you could use plastics, like single use plastics, water bottles, things like that. And using a hydraulic pressure can compress them to make bricks. And these bricks can be used for building businesses, coastal defences um, and things like that. I think ultimately the younger generation and obviously when we have children, we're the people who have to deal with the problems of climate change, coastal erosion, things like that. So I think it's important that we're given a voice in these decisions to try and stop or adapt to it happening. I'm Oscar Appleton Bardall and this is my friend Lewis and we work together on Eco Stepper. So me and Oscar were walking down the road in town and we noticed how many cars use on the road. So basically our project um, was a concept of an app called Eco Stepper where if you choose to walk somewhere instead of going there by vehicle, then you'll get points which you can spend on some reward. It's hoping to achieve and it's, it's aiming to uh, cut down on the amount of people who are just singularly going in the car to work. Hull's one of the most congested cities in England, I believe, and we thought there must be a better way to cut down on all these things and there's just way too much traffic on the road and way too many people who are just taking the easy option when it, where we could be reducing carbon emissions and uh, contributing to the environment. If we were picked as the winners, I'd be uh, ecstatic to say the least. Getting that put on our CV and things, it's like, you know, you've really, you've taken your time to do something that's helping globally. I was glad I got this opportunity in the first place to do this and I'd be very happy with that result. If we were kind of a winner, it would be honestly the best thing. Some people feel great, yeah. And yeah, it'd be nice to have like an impact on like the way the world is and next generation. Brilliant, thanks so much. And I think that's a, a really wonderful film to, to showcase the huge amount of work that's gone on and um, that's gone into the Waterline Student Challenge. And it's really brilliant to see the projects in action. I love that message about uh, how the small changes all lead to, to a big difference. And I think it's clear to anyone watching that video, just how passionate all the students are in making sure their voices are heard and others are protecting um, the environment too. So without further ado, I'm uh, very pleased to introduce our first speaker, Becky Hart, Director for Yorkshire and Humber at CBI. So over to you, Becky. Thank you. There are no jobs on a dead planet. So Tanya Steele, the CEO of the World Wildlife Fund, commented in an interview a few weeks ago where she talked about the role of policymakers, world leaders and businesses in saving the planet. I'd like to add another set of people to that list, and that is our future leaders. The students that you've already heard a little bit from, but are going to hear so much more from today. You could argue that they are the final generation of students who will have a chance to make a difference because the science tells us that we have just 10 years to really start to reduce the impact of climate change and ensure that we don't warm our planet beyond one and a half degrees. Ahead of today, I spoke to a wide range of people from business leaders, university professors, teachers from around the region, their students and the CBI's future leaders who hail from organisations as diverse as the region itself. What I was struck by was the uniformity of their response. It's not a nice to do to involve the younger generation when considering sustainability in your business. It's a must do. Be in no doubt, there is no individual firm whose business model won't be affected by the transition to a net zero economy. Not just in the ways they do business, but also the expectations each generation has more than the last on the business community to do better. Whether that's more and more environmentally conscious um, products and services being demanded, to more employees demanding organisations deliver on their promises to cut emissions, reduce waste and operate more sustainably. Or more investors demanding the strongest ESG possible from firms before they'll actually commit capital. So in speaking today about what's actually in it for business, the answer is just where do I start? The advantages are actually endless. 
But today, when thinking about students as both collaborators and employees, I'm going to focus on three. Of course, students are consumers too. They have a desire to do something and make a change. And as we've seen with the most recent protests, they are understandably frustrated with the pace of change so far. They will vote with their feet, whether that's in their transport choices, what they wear or what they eat. And most crucially to what I wanted to say today, and judging by my conversations with the CBI's your own future leaders, this generation is prepared not to only challenge those closest to them, like my children constantly challenge their grandparents, but also their employers and stakeholders. And let's face it, we all need a mirror holding up once in a while to make us think about our actions. Research by PwC shows that just 13% of companies in the UK have sufficient sustainability knowledge or resources to make a difference. So unsurprisingly, there is a huge demand for school leavers and graduates with this knowledge. In some cases, a salary premium is on offer and we're better in the country to get involved, but in the Humber. So my first point is vision. Students are already learning about the UN's 17 Sustainable Development Goals in school, not just as part of the science curriculum, but also through cross-cutting subjects like PISHI and art. Ask yourself, can you name them? They certainly weren't something I could recall seamlessly, but the students you will hear from later on today certainly can. So when businesses are increasingly using the UN Sustainable Development Goals as one of the best tools available to provide a framework to um, improve their ESG scores and reporting, employing people who actually know what they are, understand how they can aid the creation and development of a sustainability strategy, and who can provide teachings for other staff who are less familiar with them is frankly a no-brainer. Because the goals though are not legally binding and each country can decide how to implement them based on their own national contexts, students and young leaders as agents of change can play an important role in influencing and pressurising political leaders and governments to pursue these goals seriously. And this quite often starts with the businesses they interact with. Whether that be a challenging tweet to a multinational or a considered intervention to their SME employer, the quicker that both businesses and ultimately governments recognise the value of collaborating and teaming up with students and youth as partners, then the quicker they will develop clear pathways to achieve the sustainable development goals and those related targets. Even the former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon recognised this, saying, no one can better understand the challenges at stake or the best way to respond to those challenges than youth. And that leads me to my second point, insight and ideas. Our schools, colleges and universities are already integrating climate change throughout the curriculum, partly because it's the right thing to do, but also because the student body is demanding it. Organisations like the Yorkshire and Humber Climate Commission are keen that climate change, carbon literacy and sustainability continue to be embedded into multiple subject areas. This is so that every school leaver and college or university graduate in the region has a solid cross-cutting understanding of the causes, consequences, and critically the solutions to the climate and ecological emergency. Such a great example of insight and ideas came from a business I was speaking to last week, a housing association who will need to retrofit their 5,000 homes, decided to start with their new office. They wanted to make their new home as eco-friendly as possible, obviously within the confines of their budget, and right at the start involved some of their youngest employees as part of the steering group. What came out of that was not just making physical choices, like installing PV, a VRF condenser or special glazing. It was about changing behaviours, encouraging people to take the stairs, wear temperature appropriate clothing, not expecting to have an individual kettle, fridge, or even bin. They encouraged small changes in ingrained behaviours, which were then facilitated by technology. But were most importantly, were instrumental in explaining why it was important and how some of these small changes could be done equally as well at home as part of a hybrid working setup. 
As a result of a suite of initiatives based around a desire to be more sustainable, the organisation has taken their building from an EPC level F to an EPC level C, a huge improvement. Another example came from the West Yorkshire Bus Alliance, who together with the AHEAD partnership, engaged students by creating the Bus to the Future project. The aim was to identify how they could not only decarbonise the vehicles themselves, but also, and possibly more importantly, change behaviours and perceptions around public transport. For the bus companies involved, there were obviously multiple benefits. And when the project ended, as well as having some great insights, 55% of the students they worked with cited they felt convinced to be an advocate for bus travel, and 46% would consider a role in the transport sector. And finally, Yorkshire Water's Living with Water campaign. Through their engagement with Wilberforce College, they are de-risking their business by helping communities to be proud of their nature-based solutions and therefore really engaged in looking after them too. All of these ideas and insights are really important in Yorkshire and the Humber, as it is well documented that the region is the highest carbon emitter in the country. And therefore we need the raw enthusiasm, idealism and innovative drive of our young leaders to help every one of the region's businesses on their decarbonisation journey. There are good jobs to be had from the opportunity that is created from how we respond to climate change. In the UK, the, U the low carbon and environmental goods sector already employs 1.4 million people and it's growing rapidly, so the time is now to take advantage in what could be classed as the most significant economic development opportunity the region has ever seen. And this brings me to my final point, collaboration and innovation. Marketing Humber have years of experience of bringing businesses together to share best practice, and the drive towards net zero is only broadening and deepening that activity. The opening event this morning is a testament to that. Add into that mix though, the Young Talent Network, the UTCs, the university, the colleges and schools, and you have the basis for a truly collaborative community who will drive innovation and as a result, improve the region's productivity. As the clock ticks down, we need every emitter, big and small, not just in this region, but globally to commit to delivering the goals of the Paris Agreement. And that means setting meaningful targets, collaborating effectively and deploying every tool they have to innovate their way to a cleaner and greener future. And I know that the examples of collaboration and problem solving you've had a brief glimpse of and we'll learn more about straight away now from the idea generators of tomorrow will inspire both businesses and individuals to do just that. So thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Becky, for those insightful, and really inspiring words. That you're absolutely right that the, the climate emergency will impact every way we live and work. And I love your point about uh, the role that young people will play in being agents for change in so many different ways. And of course, that, that point about the, the vision and the vast opportunities which can be created from responding to the climate emergency across the Humber um, in the years ahead is, is so important too. So thank you very much. So now it's time to speak to that next generation of workers um, that will help us to deliver Net Zero, our six finalists. Um, so I'd like to invite each team to talk about their projects and why they took part in the challenge. So first up, uh, we should have Animal Water Savers from Bishop Burton College. So congratulations again, Animal Water Savers. Huge wow. well done. Wow. Getting to the final stage and over to you to tell everyone a little bit about your project and why you took part in the challenge. Hi, we're um, the Animal Water Savers. Basically, how it all started was we were just getting some statistics and we saw one of the main global impacts is that we waste 6.6 .6 billion litres of water a day um, and that's just through leaky pipes. So we decided to take out an experiment where we went into the animal unit, we measured all the water from each enclosure and we see how much we wasted. We'd actually wasted 20.2 litres. So we've installed IBCs, we tried different ways to, to reuse the water, not only for the animals benefit, but you know, for plants and things like that. Brilliant. So did you calculate <coughs> how much uh, water would be wasted over a whole year then, if you did it on a daily basis? 
Uh, we worked out it'll be about 100 litres per week um, that we would use. Um, and our IBCs hold up to 1,000 litres. Um, so if we did that over the course of a year, it would be about 7,300 litres that we would save throughout the whole year. Wow, a huge amount then. So the inspiration, obviously you're, you're passionate animal lovers, I assume. And um, did you notice any kind of benefits from um, getting up and close with the animals and thinking about um, the kind of wider sustainability impacts that looking after the animals had? Yeah, um, when we um, change the waters um, in the animal enclosures, uh, we do actually hold otters here on our animal unit, which have quite a large pond for their enclosure. Um, so when we change that water and reuse it, um, that's a benefit to them. Um, it's quite a good hands-on experience that we have here with the animals every week. Brilliant. And so do you think these changes that you've made, you'll continue to implement them? And are there any other changes that you, you might think about in the future as well? Um, our IBCs also collect rainwater as well. So that's an additional more water that we are saving and reusing as well. Fabulous. That's brilliant. Uh, a wonderful project. So big, big well done again to you for um, for your contribution and for your submission. Um, really well done. Thank you. So thanks very much, Animal Water Savers. Um, next, we should have the Eco Steppers from Mallet Lambert School. So congratulations to you as well, Eco Steppers. Um, could you please share as well why you took part in the challenge and how you developed your project um, and your submission for the challenge? Uh, we are Eco Steppers, my friend who worked with me on the project currently isn't here today. But um, we originally thought when the project started, um, we were looking at some of the cars and how people were in cars separately, even though there's even, uh, just one person in each car, even though they could be uh, just walking or cycling or using some other means of method to get to uh, their destination. And the idea of our project was to create an app that would um, cut down on that by giving people rewards or not using their vehicle and instead using a more eco-friendly option. Brilliant. And so what was the inspiration for your project? Uh, the inspiration was one day me and my friend, we were, um, we were looking at, we were just walking somewhere in town and we looked at the side of the road and realised how many people were just by themselves in cars when they could be using a more um, eco-friendly option because they were just wasting space when it was, it was much easier to just walk or cycle to the place to go into. Um, and we thought surely there has to be a better way than just all this um, carbon emissions being put out in the air with people who just choose the new options to get to them. Brilliant. Yeah, it was um, great to see the kind of interaction of technology with uh, driving uh, improvements in behaviour that also impact the environment too. So a big well done there. And what are you hoping to learn from your VIP day with uh, a regional business? Uh, we're hoping to learn more effective things that happen with climate change that we haven't already seen so far that um, we don't tend to know about them. Brilliant. Well, thank you again and yeah, congratulations again for your brilliant submission. So next, hopefully we have loyal leaders from Engineering University Technical College, Northern Lincolnshire. So big congratulations, loyal leaders. Um, you can also tell us a bit about your, your project and your experience taking part in the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi there, loyal leaders. Hi. So we've decided to make a game because we think we want to make the world better as we want the younger generation to be able to learn from it and then they can use the game to also help make, make the world better. Brilliant. And, and how did you go about developing the game then? So we uh, used Scratch and we went on it and uh, we decided that we, that we wanted to do a wind turbine. So we was like thinking on how to do it found, and we all came up with some sort of idea and then we put it together. Brilliant. And I remember there was lots of different elements in the game that you could adjust and, and play around with um, on the, the kind of on the digital platform. So what were some of the um, areas that would increase or decrease energy production from the turbine? Um, well, we would be able to use, uh, like we'll be able to 
use the energy and the wind and try and get it to like just power it up in in a sort, and then we try and fix it in a way, uh, try and get it to a stable level so it's not going all over the top and it's ruining things. Brilliant. It was, yeah, very, very clever game. And, and what did you enjoy most about taking part in the project? Uh, uh, I really enjoyed, like, being able to, well, teamwork, really, to be able to, like, create something that could be used with younger generations to, to work with sustainability. Brilliant. And has it changed anyone's ideas about a future career in sustainability? Is that something that you think you might be interested in? I suppose it almost feels a bit inevitable. Maybe. Yeah. Do you know what you want to do as your future careers yet? No. I want Please. to jump on a technician, possibly on a renewable power plant of some form. Brilliant. Very exciting. Lots of opportunities, certainly on your doorstep in the in the years to come. So thank you very much, loyal leaders, and congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. So next up on the line, hopefully we've got our DUTC sustainability crew from Ron Deering University Technical College. So congratulations, sustainability crew. And over to you, tell us a bit about your project and joining the challenge. Uh, so uh, hi, we are the RDUTC's uh, sustainability crew. Um, so we found this competition through uh, studying sustainability with um, uh, with a unit backed by Orsted. Um, our project was to look into carbon emissions um, in the UTC and trying to carbon offset um, our carbon emissions of the UTC and to make the staff and students socially responsible for their own carbon emissions. Um, so one of the first main points that we wanted to look at was carbon offsetting our carbon emissions with planting trees. So we got in contact with Hull City Council and got try, we're trying to find a space to plant trees so we have a forest to carbon offset for every, so a tree for every student that's been to Rondering, is at Rondering and is gonna to come to Rondering, as well as all the staff members. So we want a tree for every single person uh, to help and we want it local so we can see the impact these trees are having to the environment. We didn't want to go with a company where it's in another country and we can't see it, we want it local. So the next big thing we wanted to, to look at and try and change was our travel. Um, yeah, so we wanted to like, promote this idea of social responsibility. Um, so I wanted to find a way to um, calculate all the carbon emissions that people were in the UTC were taking to and from uh, school, um, which I did using a spreadsheet and a form that was linked to the spreadsheet and it had like a bunch of calculators in it. Um, and through this, people could really like, like realize what, um, how many, how much, what their carbon footprint was. And um, it, as a result, people are, like bike, more, biking more to school and um, we've had to like, expand our bike trip because of it. Brilliant. So the last thing that we did that we wanted to do was promote the new year 10s coming in, which was the newest year, was to promote this idea of sustainability. So we used our findings and made a presentation, but also showed them the ways Ron Deering is already committed to becoming sustainable, like using um, reusable water bottles instead of single-use plastics. So we wanted the year 10s to know that this is a big priority for us so they can kind of join to the legacy we're leaving. Fabulous. That's such a, a positive message about that legacy piece as well and, and sharing the learnings with um, younger students as well. So massive well done. And I love that idea as well of, of having that kind of forest of, of trees nearby locally so you can think about all the social positive benefits that, that come from um, planting trees as well as the, the environmental benefits too. And was there anything in particular that you both learned um, as a result of taking part in the, the project? And I suppose that might be as technical as all those calculations in the Excel file, or it might be something wider too. 
So something I learned from the project was I didn't actually realise how much carbon emissions I was having just travelling in. And I think a lot of other people didn't realise. So it was making them aware and then they could change it themselves and make that small change. And I think I learned that people are going to listen if you bring them the facts and show them exactly what they're doing instead of um, trying to make it. You need to cycle in more instead we're trying to be this is a carbon emissions that you're doing currently but if you do this and cycling your carbon emissions will go down so it was more of a i learned to give people the facts so they can change brilliant yeah just pretty much the same thing it's it's like um one, one of the most one of the biggest things that i learned about this um was just it's it's astronomical how much like, carbon we produce. So it's really important that we collaborate and come together to, you know, kind of fix this problem because it, it's it's a big issue like now, especially with science saying that we, we have only like ten years to you know, before it becomes really bad. Absolutely, and and that point around small changes all adding up to to big impact is is dead right. So. Huge well done and, and thanks again um, for your submission. So next up, we hopefully have Team OEI from Mallet Lambert School. Big congratulations, Team OEI as well. Um, so Team OEI, could you please share um, a bit about why you took part in the competition and outline your project to, to the audience as well? Um, we took part in this competition because we learned about, we know about um, plastic waste is a huge issue, especially in the UK with 381 million tonnes of plastic waste yearly. Um, we wanted to make a more efficient way of storing this plastic and um, then using that to make things like coastal defensive because we are one of the fastest emerging coastlines in the UK. And so it is. And um, it's a long-term way of storing plastic, which is more environmentally friendly and is a better use of our plastic instead of like landfill and the Brilliant. And, and what inspired you then to develop your project and how did you go about actually putting it all together? Um, our inspiration was obviously seeing the um, seeing these things on the news and in the media and we went about putting it together by doing some research about massive um, plastics and things like that and then looking at um, how we, it could directly help us in Hull and East Riding. Brilliant. And are you looking forward to the VIP day with your original business? What, what are you hoping to learn from that day with the business? Uh, yeah, we're well, looking forward to it and hopefully, you know, it will improve our understanding of yeah, like learn new experiences and really develop our knowledge on like how we can help the world. Also learning how our businesses on the Humber are uh, directly helping towards the effect of climate change and adapting to climate change. Brilliant. And I see there's um, a very nice inspirational quote um, on the wall behind you. So uh, a great final message um, to leave everyone with there as well. Thank you very much to Team OEI. And finally, mm -hmm. we should have Team Wilberforce from Wilberforce College. So congratulations to Team Wilberforce. And could you tell us a bit about your project and why you took part in the Waterline Summit Challenge too? Can you see us? Yep, yep. Thank you. Put it on big screen. <laughs> Go on, talk to us. Um, well, we started off by having a zero carbon day to reduce the amount of carbon that the science is producing. And um, by doing this, we turned off lights and used natural light instead. We didn't use any gas or water. Um, we tried to limit the use of projectors um, to sort of like help reduce the amount of carbon emissions. Um, we also tried to encourage recycling and encourage
encourage like the students as well as the teachers to recycle by using, reusing coffee cups or just putting the right um sort of like rubbish in the right bins. Um, and then we are like attempting to transform like the college site by sort of like implementing like different sort of um like yeah like free spaces and encouraging plants to sort of help with the whole like process and fixing process. Um, and then we're also trying to double glaze the windows inside the block to reduce the um, use of Bunsen burners to heat the classrooms. Brilliant, so a huge amount of activity then. And what did you enjoy most about taking part in the project? Um, like I really enjoyed like sort of sharing ideas and developing like the teammates ideas. So sort of come to a, like, a conclusion of what we need to do to um, help the environment within the unit. Brilliant. And did you change, so you changed lots of things in uh, school, but did you take any of those learnings back home as well? Um, yeah, I have. Um, I've been more sort of cautious about what I'm putting into the bin, like which bin it's going in. I'm like, I'm bringing more food in from home, so I'm not wasting like plastic wrappers. Brilliant. So yeah, all those things make such a, a big difference overall, don't they? So big, big well done to, to you all for reaching the final. Um, big congratulations. So that's great. That's all of our finalists. So big congratulations again to, to all six of you, um, all six teams. Um, but before we get ready to announce the winner, I'd like to welcome two other members of the Waterline Student Challenge judging panel. So Sue Allen, Finance Director at Willerby, and Mark Blenkinsop, Head of Estates at KCOM, to talk about the Waterline Student Challenge from a regional business and judges perspective. So I think over to you, Sue, first please. Good afternoon, thank you very much. It's been fantastic to hear you all in person talking about your projects. You've really, really brought them to life even more than you did already with the original submissions. We really had a great experience as judges uh, when we went through these entries. You really gave us lots of inspiration in our own organisations uh, and I certainly uh, stole a few of your ideas already and brought them back to Willoughby. Just in case um, you're not really sure what we do at Willoughby, we make about 7,000 holiday homes every year. So that's lodges, caravans and residential park homes. So we have a lot of people on site and we, lo we use lots of raw materials on site. So we're really, really interested in what we can do to, to really minimise our impact on the planet um, and understand what our future customers really want from our products. So um, really having that insight into what students are looking for and how they can help us going forward is just really interesting for us. I think across the Humber region, having that sustainable future is a massive task for all of us. So it's really reassuring to see the amount of creativity and skill and teamwork that all of the students have put into these projects because future talent is something that we've all got to nurture as well as the planet as we move along. So with students this bright across our region, I think in summary, we can all be really, really proud and we can be very hopeful about the future. So at Willoughby, we're really looking forward to welcoming one of the um, winning teams on site to spend a day with us. I'll just describe a little bit about what that day might look like. So during the day, the students will start with a factory tour. So you can see how our craftspeople build the holiday homes and lodges. Then we'll move on to our consumer showground, which is also on site on Hedden Road for a session with our product team and then the students will see how we use consumer research to help us to design new products. Then there's a chance to see how we use our Matterport camera to create 360 videos of our caravans and lodges and to finish by creating their own 360 film. Our environmental team will then show the students our biomass plant that we installed last year that recycles our on-site waste and creates heat for all of our factories. After that, there'll be a session with the marketing team 
and they will focus on how we use data to plan our digital marketing campaigns. Finally, uh, the students will be asked to write their own social media post about one of the caravans or lodges that they've spent time in on our showground and have particularly enjoyed spending the time or enjoy the design. So we hope to see one of the teams soon, but well done to all of the winning student teams today. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Sue. And that sounds like a wonderful day. I'm very jealous of whichever team gets to, to join you for that. Uh, Mark, over to you now. Yeah, thank, thanks, Kate. You, you stole the words right out of my mouth. There. I think I'd quite like to uh, come along to Willoughby as well for that day out. So, OK, just first and foremost, um, you know, well done to you all. It's been fantastic to uh, be part of this uh, to be part of this um, shortlisting. So I was really blown away by some of the fantastic ideas the students have brought forward into the challenge. It, it gave a real insight into the minds of the younger generation, highlighting what they see as the challenges and concerns right now around climate change. It's easy to see that they care so much about the world we live in and the future generations, which, will, which is incredibly humbling. Alongside great innovation comes sound collaboration, and you all clearly mastered this as they worked really well collaboratively to bring, bring together these projects and bringing them to life. So as part of the KCOM day, the students can look forward to a site tour of Telephone House. So those are the guys that are familiar with, um, with Hull and East Yorkshire Telephone Houses in the city centre and is the, the kind of the headquarters for, for uh, KCOM. Uh, we'll, be look, we'll take a look over the history of how the city became, its very own independent telephony network from cream telephone boxes to super fast broadband uh, that we now provide across the city of Hull and East Yorkshire and now expanding rapidly into areas of northern Lincolnshire and further afield. We will then look to show you a number of our environmental sustainability projects such as the new solar power and uh, solar panel installation and uh, look at our waste compactor on site, which diverts um, all of, a lot of our waste from landfill, as well as our electric vehicles. Uh, we will then look to take one of the electric vehicles out and go and visit one of the installation projects of fibre uh, that we're providing to the home, where the students will even get a chance, hopefully, to have a go at splicing some fibre and, uh, and seeing how all the engineering works um, kind of come together. So. Like I say, really looking forward to having you guys on, uh, to come down and visit. Um, like I say, look, good luck to all of you and see, see, and see one of you uh, in the not too distant future. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Mark. And that also sounds like a, a really wonderful day um, too. So hopefully the students will be looking forward to that. And just to really echo as well what, what Sue and Mark said about um, how enjoyable the judging process was and, and the great minds that are clearly um, in our future generations as well. So. Thanks very much for that. So now it's the moment that everyone has been waiting for. So I'd like to welcome Andrew Percy, MP for Brigham Gould and Isle of Axholm, to say a few words from a regional perspective on the importance of innovation and engaging with students, and most importantly, to announce the winner. So Andrew, over to you. Oh, Andrew, I think you're potentially on mute. How's that? That's it, yeah. There we are. Thanks, uh, uh, Kate. I would have to be the one person who gets the you're on mute uh, in this. But uh, look, thank you uh, for inviting me today. And thanks to all the businesses who supported this uh, brilliant initiative. Um, more importantly, thanks to all of the uh, teams who've been involved, all the students and all of your educational institutions who've supported you. It makes me quite proud as one of our uh, MPs representing the Humber, East Yorkshire, Northern Lincolnshire, uh, down here at Westminster to see what I've seen today and just how brilliant all of these projects are. Um, so I can imagine it's been very difficult for the judging panel to choose, so I'm pleased I wasn't on that. But really, you should all be incredibly proud of uh, yourselves and of all the work and effort you've put into these uh, projects. Um, you're coming from our region, from the Humber. We have been at the centre of the UK's economic growth for you know, approaching, well, well over now, actually, uh, a century, two centuries. In fact, lots of our towns and communities only exist because of um, uh, that, uh, that economic activity, whether it's Ghoul, it only exists because of coal, historically, and the same for Scunthorpe, only exists because of 
uh, the steel industry or came together because of the steel industry. So we've really been at the center of all of that. And that's because of the geography, the geographical advantages we have. We've got access to the high seas. We've got brilliant agricultural land. And that's why we're a real center for you know, steel making, chemicals, uh, food processing, manufacturing and energy generation, of course. Uh, and all of those industries have driven you know, the economic wealth of our of our own area, um, but also indeed of the entire country uh, and much of the world. And, uh, you know, it, uh, they've come with huge advantages for us locally, as I say, um, uh, in, in jobs and for the economy. But there are also advantage, disadvantages of those industries now. And that's why, you know, as others have said, the Humber is now the largest CO2 producing area of um of the uk and that's not something we should be ashamed of um it's we should be proud that we've contributed so much to the progress of humanity but it is something we have to do something about now we know we understand the science better and that's why lots of us down here at westminster uh, as your representatives do spend a lot of our time trying to grapple how we're going to deal with this issue of uh, of climate change and lots of the innovation we've seen today is a really good uh, start to helping us uh, along that journey um uh, so we do have to change everybody accepts that now and that's why uh, the Humber is now growing increasingly as this centre for green uh, technology. Uh, and it's really different to me as a, as a, when I was a young person, many, many, many years ago, growing up in the Humber, you know, the jobs were all in those heavy hydrocarbon industries. Um, so it was when I, I was at White College in Hull and you, lots of people when looking around for jobs, it was, you know, working in offshore oil and gas. It might have been in one of the coal fired power stations, could be at the steelworks. And uh, whereas now for you, uh, young people today, you've got huge opportunities in the Humber now uh, in the green uh, sector, uh, and that is really the future. So whether it's offshore wind, whether it's what we do in the future of hydrogen, these new energy plants, uh, of which uh, we had an announcement just last week about uh, fusion energy in Goul, um, uh, you know, you're going to have huge opportunities in the Humber. I'm really proud as one of our MPs is at the center of greening uh, the UK. And I'm very enthusiastic about that, as are all of our MPs in the Humber. And we work very closely on pushing our region um, uh, to ensure that we get to grips with climate change, but also make sure it's it's young people in our part of the country who have the opportunities in in these new green uh, uh, jobs. And, and those jobs are not just as the traditional sense of engineering. All of our jobs in the future are going to have a green tinge to them, um, whatever that might be as running as a, perhaps a project manager, a teacher even, office worker. It's all going to be based around uh, uh, greener uh, technologies and a greener future. So that's why this challenge uh, is really important because it um, helps uh, uh, display some of those skills that are going to be required uh, for those jobs of the future. So I am really impressed with what I've seen today uh, uh, and really uh, impressed with all of the projects. And that's why, as I say, it must have been very, very difficult for the judges um, to, uh, to decide. But uh, uh, before I, I uh, uh, announce the results, I don't know whether we have a drum roll, but if not, I just want to, uh, again, thank you all for taking part and just say to you all, you know, stay in the Humber. We've got huge opportunities coming in the future. Uh, those opportunities are already here now, whether you look at the Siemens factory in Gould, we're going to have new elect uh, sorry, Siemens factory in in Hull uh, on the offshore wind, we've got the new Siemens factory coming to uh, Gould, which is going to be the new greener electric uh, trains of the future and of course the the new energy plants which we've talked about including one at Kidby so we've got huge opportunities in our region so please stay in our region put your brilliant skills we've seen on display to use locally uh, uh, helping to tackle this huge problem of uh, climate change uh, uh, and protecting our planet for the future so thank you to you all and now it is my incredible pleasure pleasure to announce the result do we have, I don't, if we were doing this in person, we could have had a wonderful drum roll, um, but uh, we haven't got one of those, but um, uh, well done to everybody. Uh, but I am really pleased to announce that the uh, overall winner of the Waterline Student Challenge of 2021 is, everybody think there's a drum roll going on. It is the uh, Ron Deering University Technical College Sustainability Crew. So I don't know whether we can do a virtual round of applause, but uh, really, really well done and congratulations to you. Uh, for that so we can all do our jazz hands or however we display it on zoom but really really well done you should be very proud of yourself uh, of yourselves um 
And then I also have the pleasure of announcing the business pairings, which if Kate gives me a nod, I'll do now as well, if that's correct. Um, so uh, they are going to be as follow. So the Animal Water Savers from Bishop Burton, uh, you will have your VIP business experience with Yorkshire Water. Uh, Eco Stepper uh, from Mallet Lambert, yours will be with KCOM. Uh, Loyal Leaders uh, from the UTC in uh, North Links will be with uh, Orsted. Uh, team OEI at Mallet Lambert will be with ABP, Associated British Ports, and Team Wilberforce will be with Willoughby Limited. So I think all of those pairings are going to be really fantastic experiences for you all. So make sure you get absolutely the best out of it. And thank you to all of those businesses uh, for giving up their time as well uh, uh, to uh, support those pairings. So that's it for me. Uh, as I say, you should all be very proud of yourself and congratulations to everybody, but special congratulations to the sustainability crew. Well done. That's a, a, a virtual round of applause. I think there might be a button for that, um, which is a very 2021 thing, isn't it? So huge thank you, um, Andrew, for that. And a massive, massive congratulations to the sustainability crew for their brilliant idea, execution of their project and a great submission. A very deserving winner. And I think they should be extremely proud of themselves for the achievement. So as winners of the challenge, um, RDUC UTC will receive an extra uh, £2,000 and very excitingly we, SSE will also be inviting members of the team to come up to Glasgow during COP26 and bring their project up and present it up there so a big well done for that and really I guess a, a once in a lifetime opportunity to be there in Glasgow during COP26. So I'd now just like to, to give RDUC's sustainability crew the chance to say a few words about their win and what it means to them. Uh, so we want to say firstly a massive thank you for choosing us as your winner. Um, we're, we've decided as a team we're going to invest the extra money into additional planting of the trees um, in Hull. Uh, we want to make a not just a greener college but we want to try now and make a greener city so oh. it's more we're expanding our project with the additional prize money. Um, it's, it's been a massive honour that we've been able to do this and that we get to come off to Glasgow. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Brilliant. And I, I love your ambition, Think, thinking big. So wonderful. And I'm very much looking forward to meeting you um, in Glasgow um, in a few weeks. So thanks again. Well done to, to you both. Um, so that's really it for today. So I'd just like to end by saying huge thank you and well done to all the students that took part and helped to create such a, a wonderful first ever Waterline Student Challenge. Um, thank you as well to the presenters today uh, and to the businesses who judge the competition and who will be hosting the six finalist teams or, uh, on a visit to their sites as well. So the Waterline Student Challenge will be returning in 2022 and hopefully we'll, we can have the awards in person with a full drum roll and clapping uh, rather than on Zoom. So please get your thinking caps on and join the challenge again next year. I, I'd also like to invite uh, you all to um, look at the Waterline Summit Event Hub, um, which hopefully there should be a link to in the chat box. Um, so there are fringe events on this afternoon. You can view live streamed events and you can learn more about the week long schedule as part of the wider Waterline Summit, um, as well as taking part um, to compete uh, in myopia um, by creating your own sustainable city. So, so do check that out, everyone, and join us tomorrow for the Energy Transition Day. So big thanks, everyone, and hope you all have a great week. Thank you. Bye.